these are the water jet cut parts that I'm going to use to make the eccentric adjusting bulkhead mount. Uh, these are the the bulkhead mounts themselves. The, the engine will be sitting over here and these mounts will bolt to a, a vertical bulkhead and then the eccentrics uh, fit in these holes here and rotate with that eccentric hole in it. The bulkhead mounts are 20 millimeter thick aluminium alloy plate, uh, water jet cut out, and the uh, eccentric blanks are made from 25 mil aluminium alloy. As you can see, it's been uh, pierced here with the eccentric hole for the bearing, and then it's also got a series of uh, holes pierced through it for use with the adjusting tool, which has also been water jet cut. This is just from a piece of 8mm plate. And a couple of pins get set in it, and they used to adjust. The water jet cutting is a really good way to cut down on the machining time for these things and the setup times. You basically just chuck this up in the, the jaws of the, the lathe and uh, you can machine it to the final sizes. I'm saying by roughing these things out, uh, you save an awful lot of machining. Uh, the water jet cutting isn't terribly expensive, but uh, I usually have to make up a, an order of quite a few items to to benefit from the the pricing. I can get all sorts of things water jet cut, more plates, these are 10 millimeter thick side plates for my differentials that have electric reverses on them. The differential bearing mount on that hole, these are just lightning holes. A few pivot points for the, the pivot mount uh, arrangement and uh, pivot mount arrangement across there and then this is where the electric reverse motor goes through. Another example, this is a sliding plate mount. Again, there's a, a cutout here from the electric reverse and the bearing carrier bolts on there. It's the opposite plate that hasn't got the, the cutout. And even things like this. This is a a hub made to mount a very large ring gear from a, I think it was a BMW X4 uh, automatic uh, engine. Uh, the ring gear from the flex plate bolts onto the outside of this uh, and then uh, a BMW starter motor was used to uh, give the reverse gear. But uh, it's a very large which uh, limits where you can fit them. Uh, my normal reverse gears, uh, the ring gears are only about that diameter and a lot easier to package. It certainly gives a good reduction ratio for the, the motor. But that's the sort of thing you can do in the water jet, no problem at all. It just rattles them out. Most water jet machines uh, are twin heads so you tend to order two of these uh, because the twin heads operate at the same time and uh, it's just as economical to cut out two as it is one. That's just an example of some of the, the stuff that I've been having water jet cut. I also get things uh, laser cut as well. Uh, water jet's good for uh, aluminium alloys, um, especially really thick alloys, laser cutting would struggle with uh, cutting out uh, things out of three quarter or, or inch thick. In fact I've had water jet cut out of uh, up to 50 millimeter uh, and it will cut, it will cut th thicker than that. Plus it uh, doesn't give you any heat distortion. What it does do though is there's a very slight 
taper to the, the cut so these faces aren't exactly square. So there's a, a taper which you've then got to machine off if it's a crit critical face. With the, the laser cut, it's good for things like thin stainless steel. I get the, the ring gears for some of the electric reverse systems done on a, uh, a laser cutter, cut out of 6mm stainless steel. It seems to do a good job. But certainly for all the alloy work, I get it to water jet cut. I see a variety of thicknesses. I'm going to be boring this eccentric bearing mount for the bearing fit in there. It's held in my uh, free jaw chuck on that bore there, so that's rotating concentrically, whilst the outer part of it is going eccentrically. So bore this side first, flip it round and bore for the oil seal on the other side, then we'll finish off the outside diameter, uh, but we need to hold the outside diameter in the chuck, because that's <laughs> obviously not in the same concentricity. That's, there's the centre of that, and there's the centre of that. The bearings, two and a quarter inch outside diameter, so we'll bore it for that. The bearing is, let's see how wide is that, 14.2 millimetres deep, so we'll be boring it around about 13 millimetres. Just an interference fit, which is just perfect. Right, need to turn it around the other way now and bore for the oil seal. So we're bored for the bearing on this side and we're bored for the oil seal on that side. Next thing to do is to chuck it on the outside diameter and machine down to 108 millimetres. Set up to do the 113 first. The 113 millimetre, the larger the diameter, is on the inside of the bearing carrier or the sort of the inside of the eccentric. Uh, mount. So this slots in from that side and the bearings on this side. Just double check that. Yes, the bearings on this side. I have been known to machine them on the wrong side. <laughs> Just have to break the edge. Right, I need to flip it around the other way. Thing. I don't have very much to grip on there because I've got the machine close to it. I get, I get within probably about five millimetres and I space it out correctly and I can finish it. Let's try this. 
brake relief out this way. This just gives a bit of clearance for the bolts that hold the sprocket on. Need to just get the counter sink and clean up these holes and then deburr that edge there. Right, I'm going to fit the bearings. I'm just going to preheat the housings a bit, make it easier to drop the bearing in. Those are fairly warm to the touch. Just put some bearing fit onto the, the bearings just to make sure that they stay in place. Spread it around a bit. You should pretty much drop in with all this gap. The battery went just at the wrong moment there. Anyway, the two bearings are, are now fitted. Holes in this side are for the adjusting tool. The adjusting tool slots in these holes and turns them. I'm going to use a, a fly cutter to square off this top edge of the, uh, the mountings. This edge uh, butts up against the, the bulkhead, and it's not 100% square against the this face. It has a slight batter on it uh, due to the way the water jet cutter cuts it, so we'll get it as a matched pair. There's two of them stacked together there. So just make sure I've got enough room to machine it. I don't have enough travel lengthwise here to to do it in one straight movement, I've got to angle it. skimmed off uh, as a pair, flat on that edge, I just need to take the burrs off the edge and uh, then I can start boring them out. So they're now sitting up perpendicular to the, the plate. Perfect. Right, I'm set up in the the three jaw chuck. Uh, I'm boring it in as far as I can from this face and then I'll flip it around and bore it from the other side. So I'm going to take this out to 108mm diameter. Running it fairly slow because it's very unbalanced as you'll see when the whole thing starts shaking. <laughs> Just using the, the compound top slide here, set at right angles. Uh, that gives me a, a positive stop before I crash into the, the face of the the jaws. So quite a way to come out there. That's probably about that's a hundred and a half millimeters. I've got to come out to 108. So a little bit more to.
what I did do when I set this up, I put a, a clock gauge against this face uh, to get it to running true so when I flip it round the other way I can make sure I get the bore right it's bored out to just over 108 to give me a little bit of clearance uh, I'll just put a chamfer on that uh, edge there <laughs> Needs to be a little clearance on this because the eccentric will rotate in that hole and there'll be a split line put across here with a bolt that clamps the eccentric in place once you've got the, the tension of the, the chain correct. Right, what I need to do now is take it out, flip it round, true it up again, bore from the other side, take it down to that level. Okay, bored from the other side now. There's a very, very slight step in the centre, but uh, I can take that down with a, a flat disc and just clean it up. Just need to put a little chamfer on this side as well. Clean it up. Just about fitting in, just a very slight mismatch there. I'll just take it down with a flat disc. Just about. Round and round. Reason will fit in there. So in with the split line there and the clamp bolt that locks up solid when once you've adjusted the position. It has about an inch of travel in the centre line of the eccentric. It's just enough to tension the chain from any position. So I've just been tapping the, the mounting holes uh, for M10 inserts. So we've got the mounting holes spaced 160mm apart. Uh, did that in the, the mill and put little counter bores in them in case I want to put a locating bush. So all the inserts fitted. The next thing to do is to work the holes in here and tap the bottom side of them and then slice through the centre. Do that tomorrow. Right, I'm going to fit the bearing carriers onto the differential. There is a an aluminium spacer there to space out for the, the size of the, or the, th the width of the bearing we're using. Just a simple case of sticking it on top and using a, a simple bit of tube and some as it's seated now here a different tone so you can see where I put uh, that relief cut it clears the heads of these bolts as it as it rotates, because otherwise it would, it would hit the bolts because of the offset. So that was the left hand side done. I put the, the same cut on this side, uh, the relief cut, but it's not really required on this side because there's no, no bolts to crash into. Put it the right way around, of course. Just Tap it gently all the way around. You can feel the, the hammer blow bouncing once it seats down. Again, it's got a, a spacer 
to lift the bearing up. And then you have the completed mounts. I put the the bolt and split line in and that clamps on the brake centric. So you just slip on like that and then you can tighten up the nut and to adjust it. You just put the adjuster in and turn it. You can uh, either, depending on how high you want the axle line, you can either have it sitting above uh, or you can have it sitting below the, the centre line. At the moment it's sitting above, but I can turn it 180 degrees. And now the axle line is, is below. I'll show you that a bit better. Well, the centre line of the uh, eccentric is about there. The centre line of the differential is there. So when you turn it, it moves in an arc so it can move from about there to there or you can have it 180 degrees out just turn it 180 degrees round so we're doing one handed right so that's it 180 degrees the other way so the centre of the eccentrics down here and the centre of the differentials there now and then the arc swings that way to adjust so you've got your adjustment from there to there it all depends whether you want to, the center line of your diff to be higher or lower so my old seals so 52 millimeter outside diameter 40 millimeter inside diameter and they run on that journal there they go with the cup face downwards and there's a, a suitable bore in there it's just a case of it down. yeah not bad right i mounted it in a stand so the engine would sit to the, the front edge here and the chain runs on the sprocket there's the rear view of it to adjust the, the chain tension you slacken these two these two uh, socket headed screws just need to slacken them a little bit and it untensions against this little split then you use the adjusting tool in the slots in the side and then you adjust it evenly because if you adjust it at an odd angle relative to each other the whole unit will cant it'll, it'll twist so you need to make sure that it's adjusted evenly to keep the, the chain running straight. Most important when you do make an adjustment that you, you do check that the sprocket is running true to the chain. It's just a case of tweaking mildly until it lines up. You can see the if you pull it that way, it's it's moving the pivot to point out the way and that would that tighten the chain and then that would loosen the chain as the sprocket is moving back and forward about an, an inch it's also oh, it's also moving in an arc up the way uh, but largely you're getting about an inch of travel certainly more than a more than the one pitch of the chain so you fine for adjusting the chain now once you've got it set in the position you want you just tighten down these two clamp bolts there's a 
a wire inset in the bottom half so you shouldn't be able to strip out the threads. They are nipped up now and they don't move. And once you finish to take out the adjusting tools, I haven't fitted the wire clips to the output shafts yet because it's a lot easier to get this installed in the car if you haven't got the output shaft sticking out of it. It's only once you do the final assembly in the car before you put the drive shaft on is you, you fit the wire clip to that, slap some grease on it and uh, push it right in it and it'll lock in behind the, the output gears and they shouldn't pop out because uh, with the low bow joints, if, if that wasn't locked in at the back, uh, it, it could work its way out until such time as there was very little spline engagement and then it would just, you'd either get no drive or you'd rip the splines off. So they need to be locked in place with the wire clips.